Joyful Blessings. This is Kaylin Castell, and I am very delighted to be here to share with you about the time mysteries, especially around leap years that occur about every four years. And I'll explain why I, not every year is on the fourth year, is it a leap year? And there's a reason for that. But this is being recorded 2024. And then we have leap years that will happen every four years after that, quite a ways into the future. So leap year is every four years. Leap day is when we add a day to the calendar on February 29th. And it is an opportunity for us to experience a day that we don't normally experience. What does that mean? How can we work with it? So first, let me explain to you how we come to this and how we understand this, uh, looking at the different uh, experiences of time. There's Kairos time or sacred time. The Greeks called it Kairos, meaning sacred time, that has to do with cyclical time, spiral time, the time that connects to the seasons and the moon phases and the planetary movements and all kinds of cycles that we can experience. And the definition is the most opportune or supreme sacred moment when eternity or time out of time occurs for an undetermined duration when something uniquely magical and special happens. And we're going to look at this as something we can maybe cultivate for February 29th uh, is this uh, Kronos, uh, Kairos time. Now, Kronos time, or we could call it linear time, is a chronological or sequential time. It's like today we're, we are having what's going on and then tomorrow we'll be having what's going on. It's a linear way of connecting to time. We have past, present, and future. Whereas cyclical time isn't fixated in that same way. And uh, this is measured by clocks and calendars. And so it does tend to fixate our awareness on the material world rather than the magical world. So we want to cultivate Kairos time with our, uh, uh, along with our cyclic, I mean, our chronological time. So, so let's just look at how the Gregorian calendar came to be. So uh, back in 1582, uh, Pope Gregory the Eighth created, or had, he actually had uh, astronomers create this calendar because he wanted a very accurate calendar because the Julian calendar had drifted off the seasons by 10 days. And he wanted something that they could just count on and it would go forward in time for a long time. So it um, also helped, he wanted to create, be able to create Christian holidays that would be fixated, like they would be fixed in a certain calendar, a certain day in the calendar, and that they would also know when to collect taxes. So um, we could imagine that this is like a way of, uh, fixating our conscious awareness on linear time rather than cyclical time or sacred time. And if we think about what ancient cultures were doing around that time, they were, they had celebrations and holidays and they, they did it based on new moon and full moon and the seasonal points. And they, they knew how to keep track of that. Uh, and the, basically the church wanted to be the intercessor like we're the ones who are going to tell you what time it is and what holidays to celebrate. And we're the ones who are going to be the intercessor so that you, if you want a direct, you cannot have a direct connection to God or the great spirit or whatever you want to call it, source energy, divine energy. We're the ones that provide that for you. And uh, it was a way of manipulation and control. So part of our job at this time is to recognize that linear time is a fixated way of experiencing time and we can bring the sacred timing back into our experience. But the thing that I do appreciate about the Gregorian calendar and having uh, time zones and clocks and understanding things from that perspective is that we can connect with people around the world based on knowing what time it, of day it is for them. And uh, that this calendar is so accurate that it only shifts about one day every 3000 plus years. <laughs> so, and they were having big shifts happening every few hundred years. So the, um, Gregor the Julian calendar did track the 365 day, um, uh, days of the year, and they did add a leap year every four years. What they weren't keep, 
didn't really realize what there was an extra 11 minutes every solar year. So that added 24 hours every 130 years and three days every 400 years. And so that was why it was drifting off um, and would dri and would continue to do that. So creating the, the Gregorian calendar eliminated that issue. And what they had to do when they in instituted the Gregorian calendar was um, jump 10 days ahead. So you can see in this image above here, October 1582, um, there was the uh, October 4th, and then it jumped to October 15th. So those days in between, if you had a birthday there, if a child was born in there somewhere in, um, or had been born somewhere in there, or did they have a birthday? How did, how did they keep track of that? It kind of messed up uh, the, you know, how we track time at this particular time. So what is interesting to note is that much of Europe resisted the new calendar until 1782 when they realized the Julian calendar that they were using, they, they, they didn't go to the Gregorian calendar, they stayed on the Julian calendar, it was now 11 days off from the seasons. And it was creating some confusion because some places did follow the Gregorian calendar, some places followed the Julian calendar. And so it was very confusing for people at that time. So the in 1752, England and the not yet established United States that but would later become the United States a few years later, decided to correct this. And they moved to the Gregorian calendar and they dropped 11 days in September in 1752. So they went from September 2nd to September 14 and made that leap. So that is, we could say, the gift of if we're going to keep track in a linear way of time, this is the reason uh, the Gregorian calendar is so accurate and, and works so well. Now, the leap year test. So this is how they decided to, um, this is what was instituted into the Gregorian calendar. Is the year divisible by four? And if so, it's it could be a leap year. And if it's divisible by 100, it could be a leap year. And if it's divisible by 400, it could be a leap year. So the at the turn of the century, at 1900, it wasn't a leap year. They, did, they skipped that year. They didn't um, use that as a leap year. And they started with 1904. Or I don't actually don't know if they did that or not. So, uh, but 2000 was a leap year because it was divisible by 400. And so this is how it keeps the days aligned and, uh, and our, our, you know, keep the calendar aligned um, with that extra 11 minutes that happens every year. Very fascinating to think about. Now, um, if we think about how the sun comes back to these different positions. So here is the tropical year, 365.24 days it's exactly back to where it was um, uh, uh, 365.24 days before. And then it comes to, um, uh, the, but it comes to the common year. It's not gonna always come back to the exact same point. So, so they add a year every four years and that creates a different place that the, that the earth is in relationship to the sun around our birthday. And that affects our solar returns. And I find this just to be fascinating. So here's another uh, view of all of this that I just talked about. And uh, so the solar return is really 365 and a quarter days. And, um, and then even though we are tracking 365 days in our calendar year. And so that means that, that the earth hasn't necessarily come back to the exact point. It was 365 and a, uh, days before. So, uh, when we add a day, then it puts the earth in a completely different relationship to the sun. So thinking about this, when the earth returns to the exact same relationship with the sun based on any given moment in time, it's considered a solar return. So if you have a birthday at that time, the sun's coming back to its exact position, but it won't necessarily be on the day you were born. Sometimes it's the day before, the day after, or and it definitely won't be the exact hour that you were born. It's going to be different each time. And that creates a, a energy for us to tune into. Again, a, a, that'll be a, for another conversation another time. But if we think about the leap year shift, it is a unique time worth noting. We can tune into this 
happening. Now, if you're born um, February 29th or after and in leap year, which I was actually a, a few days right after the leap year happened in, in, in 1956. So the, uh, so I was born in a leap year and every year when the, when we have the extra day, it, it creates a difference in my solar return that it's notable. <laughs> so I find that fascinating. So tuning into that energy, it's like a time portal or a time, um, a way to connect. So this is what I'm hoping I'm doing is helping to give you greater time awareness and connecting to the magical energy of time. And we can do that by tuning into the vast dimensions of time, time portals, multiple timelines, time travel. Uh, and, and this doesn't mean that we need to actually see a time portal and walk through it or, or um, have a time machine or any of that. We can just do that in, through our meditation, through our intention, through uh, ways that we're tuning in. And I'll just say that uh, the multiple timelines has been coming into my awareness because I've had conversations with people about experiences that happened in the past. And though there are many aspects of those experiences that are similar, they're also very different aspects that they remember that I don't remember and I, or they remember differently than I remember. So I'm like, huh, maybe we were having an experience in a different timeline. So, and then also time portals where we can walk into different timelines or different times, past, present, future times, uh, time travel. So you can do that in your mind. Sometimes I've gone back in uh, time to just sort of see if I can suss out something that is happening for me now and that how where that got seeded back in time or going forward in time and seeding ideas. And this is something I've been uh, finding myself doing a lot more the last few days even, just uh, looking forward into something and what's that gonna be like and putting some intentional possibilities there. So I'm inviting everyone on February 29th to tune into what feels most alive for you and how do you want to um how, how do you want to engage this time it's a magical time it's a time we don't usually get it only happens every 4 years so if you take the time <laughs> to tune in what could you access what could you energize what could you connect to on february 29th of any year that we have that date so here's to magical time uh, creating a, a, a greater time awareness, how this uh, time of February 29th, this leap year, leap day, how that can help expand our sense of time. <laughs>